I, I wanted to learn about gratitude and so um, I bought Imam Al-Khazali's book on uh, patience and gratitude and uh, I started to read the first section and then I thought I don't need to read about patience because I'm, you know, I'm a photographer, I know about patience. So I turned straight to the section on gratitude. And the first line said that half of gratitude is patience. And I laughed at myself that the fact I didn't have the patience to read the section on patience. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, there's so much wisdom in these books, really. And uh, it's, I think it's a very important project. You know, from the first great uh, sheikh that I met, Imam Habib, to the great uh, Habib Ahmed Mashur al-Haddad, they always, always confirmed the importance of Imam al-Ghazali and studying his books. And I've always clung to that and I've always got so much from them, although I think what uh, Aisha is doing is so important because it is very scholarly and it needs to be almost like translated for a younger generation and I think it's so important to make those books accessible. Most people are not looking for religion, they're looking for spiritual nourishment and uh, this is so important at this time with mental illnesses and you know psychological problems that people facing, people under a lot of stress, they need nourishment for the heart. And they're not, as you say, they're not looking for information, they're looking for spiritual nourishment. Imam Al-Ghazali really delivers that in his teaching. I, I can only wish that I had this body of work that uh, she's doing now at the time when my children were young because I don't consider myself very academic and I didn't really feel like I had the tools to really teach them really about these things. One can only just absorb it in self and try and be a role model. But I think having that body of work is so, is really, really important. I think it's, it's really going to help the next generation. Because they're, they're different. Life is very different than it was even when I was growing up. People don't have time. People don't have time to study. Their lives are very busy. People are working much longer hours and trying to survive. And so I think this is so important. I think the more this gets into schools, this will really, really help. You have to be the role model. You can't, there's no compulsion, you know, we're always told these things, there's no compulsion in the Dean. And you see it most strongly with your children. You can't force your children to do anything. You can only be a role model and try and appeal to their intellect, but you can't force them to do something. You can't force them, I mean, they might pray because you've forced them to do it, but they'll never, they'll never find love of prayer in, in that. You know, you have to create an ambience where they can really taste what the prayer is. And I think that's really a challenge as a parent these days. You know, there's so many distractions for, for our children. But I think if you create a place where you pray, they'll feel it in the house. You know, my children often say, oh, the house is not the same when you're not here, you know, and they, so they do, they recognize that there's some benefit from the practice of prayer or remembering God. And I think that's, if you can leave that legacy with your children, you've left, you've left them something important. You know, the world talks about mindfulness and the importance of happiness or but all these things, we have all those skills. You just have to learn to know how to practice them in, in a way that's meaning, meaningful for you and for other people. And many of the great people that I photograph for my book really say very little. Their, their silence speaks volumes. And uh, as a man who, as a person who's always loved images, I really relate to that, you know, I find words very difficult. When I've met these people who are very quiet, and when they speak, it is full of wisdom, you know, that's, I, I, you know, I, I aspire to that. I think that's very, very important at this time. Really, uh, I often say now that, you know, 
We talk about peace, but they are peace itself. When you sit in their company, you feel it's tangible. And you sit with them, they never, ju they never judge you. They see you at a certain point of your spiritual journey and they pray for you. They pray for maybe the kind of challenges that you'll come up against, that it'll be made easy for you. It was really, uh, for me, such an amazing experience. I'm so grateful that I did that project. And I met some incredible people and they agreed. You know, these people are not, don't like to be photographed, not because they think photography is forbidden, but because they don't want anything that makes them appear that they're something. It's from deep humility that this, this, their position is. And many of the people had never been photographed before, but for some reason they agreed to allow me to take their pictures. Many of them were very old and somebody said it was because they're about to leave this world that it was not, it didn't matter anymore. But there are, you know, there are great saints whose role is to be hidden. Uh, and there are other saints and sages whose role it is to teach. You know, so I was really bringing a, a face to these people as a kind of counter-narrative really against the whole extremist position. I did a workshop one year with a whole group of non-Muslim professionals in Spain. And uh, I said to them, you know, how many of you have heard of extremists in Islam? And they all put their hands up. And then I said, who's heard of the opposite? And no one had ever heard of saints and sages within the Muslim world. And I gave a presentation from my book. And afterwards, a whole group of them came to me and said, we want to come with you to come to Morocco and meet these people. So you realize there is a hunger to, to meet saintly people and get some kind of answers to spiritual problems that people are facing you know so yeah it was it was a a great a great uh, experience and uh, i'm forever grateful to god for letting me do this thing